Hello everyone. Um, I'm flying solo this week as Lara is off in the fatherland retracing some sort of family steps there. Um, but I'm taking things rogue. I'm taking things in my own hands, into my own talons, and I'm I'm flying high, I'm flying free, and I feel really good about this. So I hope that you'll come with me on this journey and um you know save your stones and wait till the end to lottery me um but thankfully i have some help we've enlisted a soldier of culture um to come in and offer us some insight into the vanderpump multiverse um he's a friend of the pod patrick sandberg is here he's a screenwriter he's a creative director fashion maven cultural barometer all that and he's here to help us recap this week's episode of vpr patrick <laughs> thank you for joining me wow i'm i'm honestly frightened are you feeling are you feeling a little nervous well i haven't podcasted in a long time that's okay i mean i i think that's actually better because it's if you're sort of like plodding along in the podcast world like we are sometimes you can get a little a little rusty so i i think having a fresh voice is really good yeah and and i was just thinking about how i've seen every episode of vanderpump rules uh yeah. which is my dark shame you know so this is a little bit like therapy dark shame but also you're i would say you're a definite scholar i i re, i remember things yeah <laughs> um i'm for some reason doing a rewatch of seasons two through four of Vanderpump. how is that did they like uh, shoot it on celluloid is it like watching an old movie when it you kind of it when you go back there i mean it, it also just it's crazy how dated the 2010s already feels um just with like fashion and everything else it does have that like grainy wartime um quality to it it's very mm -hmm. dreamlike they're in hawaii right now for jackson it's tom's birthday I also just feel like, you know, in the digital era, now that we do, we can't really differentiate by, you know, uh, the available film stocks, right. I think that eyebrows are a replacement. You can really trace where we are by what's happening with eyebrows. That's actually really, yeah, what would you say is like the trajectory of eyebrow in the last 40 years? Um, downhill, for sure. Yeah. Um, it's just a steady decline. It's wild. What's your favorite era of eyebrow? Because you're sort of like, I feel like you're like an archivist of. It's really. Archivist. Okay, I think. Like I, culture, I think women, fashion, trends. Right. Once again, I, rem I do remember things. I think that um, women's eyebrows were at their most handsome probably in the early 90s there seemed to be less of an awareness that eyebrows were something that needed to be done mm. and therefore everybody looked better maybe even you know everything leading up to then it was around the mid 90s when we started seeing eyebrows being heavily tweezed the tweezing mm. kind of took over um and then around the mid aughts everyone wanted bushy eyebrows again. So they started becoming very drawn on, tattooed on. Right. Um, we saw like a lot of makeup, a lot of threading, a lot mm. of dyes. And I think that it kind of hit peak insanity around 2017 when you started to see everybody's eyebrows um, become laminated is the term. Mm which is like as if they stuck their finger in an electrical outlet and all the <laughs> hairs just stood straight up but in like very perfect yeah lot you know um and we're still getting away from that but you're still seeing it so 
I feel like when looking at an old season of Vanderpump, you are probably seeing like a, a heavily manicured, drawn on brow. Yeah, I think no one is more telling of the brow moment than Sheena. Like especially wow. in early seasons, her brow game slash eyeshadow was just like sort of peerless. When I close, if I close my eyes and I imagine Sheena, yeah, she has no eyebrows. Is that weird? <laughs> no, I I, <laughs> I see her as like a bait. Sometimes I close my eyes and see her as like an infant. <laughs> with like, it's like how do you define a sunset? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like <laughs> what just cuz you do I mean you've you've been like in the game with like magazines and editorial and fashion and like I mean you were a new, big New York fashion person. What is what's spur, like spurred on the shift from like natural to t heavily tweezed in the 90s just like like hmm. sort of like the supermodel thing like had that started or like the 90s models like being really tweezed for editorials probably it, everything probably starts in paris you know yeah at some point i think there was like when you look at nostalgia cycles and the 20 year cycles things happen in a way that becomes increasingly manic yeah um so like you know, the 70s were really big in the 90s, but it was like the 90s doing the 70s doing the 1920s, if that makes oh, sense. Yeah, like, <laughs> so like flapper it was girl like, eyebrows. It was definitely like a Galliano influence, um, right. you know, a kind of flapper type of thing, but then being paired with 70s vibes and updated for the 90s, it was a mess. I mean, we saw it, also with uh Sydney on Melrose Place, she was kind of like <laughs> the ersatz uh post Lady Miss Keir, <laughs> like 60s, 90s character on television. It, it like a very strange specific reference, I know, but we didn't have vendor pub rules back then. We didn't well, have fun... reality TV like this. Yeah. So... Funnily enough, I actually I felt Sheena's reference in her outfit last week at Hotel Ziggy was giving Lady Miss Keir a little. I'm noticing that they were almost well, I'm probably exaggerating. A few of them were all were wearing Gautier, which I found strange, like as if they had coordinated it. What who would you say? So have you ever crossed paths with Kelly Catrone? Absolutely. Cause I mean, she's like I, we've talked about Kel on Earth on the show, but for anyone who hasn't okay. watched Kel on Earth, like it is probably it's definitely like the foremother of Bravo shows. Like it's a pioneer reality television show. And it to me is like a classic Bravo one or I think it was only two seasons. I put it in the same category with like a few shows that were killed before their time, you know? Gallery like Girls. Gallery Girls. NYC um, Prep. Exactly. All incredible shows. Do you, what is your, I mean, I feel like Kelly's kind of having a renaissance a little, or at least a small one I see on like queer social media. Yeah. Um, I think the Gen Z kitties are rediscovering Kel on Earth on TikTok. And I wonder why that is. I kind of have a theory, but. Well, I think that like everyone has been so coddled and everything yeah. has become about, you know, like feelings are facts and, you know, yes. disagreements are violence, etc. Yes. So there is something about her. If you have to cry, go outside, <laughs> tough as nails, uh, straight talking, day drunk kind of persona that is newly appealing because, you know, the pendulum swings. Yeah. Are we heading back to like a if you have to cry go outside mentality i hope so like will gen alpha be like robotic again i heard Steely. i heard i heard, heard a rumor that gen alpha that they're full nihilists <laughs> burn it all down you you're like i was talking to these seven-year-olds and they were telling me <laughs> they were like give a fuck 
they were quoting Nietzsche and they were like, yeah, yeah they were like, gaze long into the abyss, honey. Yeah, they're reading Spilling. They're reading um, Infinite Jest <laughs> and Anne Rind. Prozac Nation. Yeah. Um, I know. I, I'm waiting for like an Elizabeth Wurzel to emerge from that generation. And I hope when she emerges that she's 11. Yeah. I want an 11 year old <laughs> writing about like, Prozac addict. Yeah. I want an 11 year old who's just like a savant at like aging herself up and i want her writing about like like i want a joan didion who's in seventh grade just like mainlining sulfates like she's yes. like she's like peptides are over yeah yes i want i want Death like cannot an... approach faster exactly know? rapid aging do you think summer moon is cigarettes a nihilist Summer Moon is a hostage. Do you think she's smoking cigs already? Um, it's probably really hard with that cast on her. <laughs> <laughs> not I to know. talk, not to talk shit about a three year old, but yeah, what a klutz! <laughs> yeah, what? What? A, she's so sloppy. <laughs> no, I'm triggered. I'm like truly triggered by Sloppy Joe. That was so, the meanest thing. I've seen come out of these. This, I mean, this okay, crew in a long time. It was I'm like mean, beyond. but it was it was also classic James. And like when James is James, can be very very quick. And sometimes he's so quick that he says things. I think before he internally vets them. Yeah, which is his superpower and his Achilles heel because, you know, he'll offend everybody. Yeah, but at the same time, it will be very clever and kind of genius. Yeah, I'm watching, obviously, James's first appearance is season two of Vanderpump when he starts dating Kristen, and you realize so quickly how no one was prepared for him, like this, <laughs> the old, like the older, the older kids in the cast, like especially Jax, wow. they are oh, yeah. so, they are just, they cannot figure him out. He's, it feels like he's. He's running on... He's know, from a foreign country. He's from a foreign country. He's running... Like, he doesn't have an agenda, but he somehow is three steps ahead of everyone. Yeah, and, like, even though he's younger than they are, he somehow, like, remember... He was around for Britpop. Yeah. <laughs> well, also... He knows I mean, everybody, you know? Yeah. There's old mates, you know? Noel and Liam. Yeah. No, I was... I was Googling him, and I... I knew his godfather was George Michael, but like I was looking at all these photos, like his dad and George Michael were cousins and wow. his mom was a model and like she was this like kind of, um, what's that Amanda woman who was married to Duran Duran? Amanda, because she was like a socialite girl in Britain when she was like a teenager. Uh, not Amanda Decadene. Yeah, De her. She's okay. like, she was sort of like a, C list Amanda the cat right 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 and well the thing about England and this is for the English listeners so they'll immediately agree and they'll we've understand got a, we've got a bunch yeah it's you know that everybody in England is related they're inbred um we've, you we've know discussed this at length yeah Courtney Love taught me that so, and so like you you kind of she's obsessed with it too but like you you kind of like um are you, you friends one, with her you meet one English person and then suddenly you connect two dots and it's the crown, you know? Yeah. Are Everyone's... you friendly with, with Coco? On and off. <laughs> you have a role. I mean, I... As I, much I'm as not... one can be while remaining sane. I'm not, and... I'm not going to make you, like, blow up your spot with people, but I know that you have, like, a Rolodex of, of acquaintances that make me... my jaw drop. Totally. Burt Reynolds, you know, I'm just kidding. Um, Faye Dunaway. Yeah, I, my life is like a Hollywood delusion. Um, no, but it's it's genuine. It's true. I know I know a lot of, a lot of people. I partied a lot, okay? Like, in I, my teens, 20s, and 30s. I mean, the first, I don't, you might not remember this, but the first time I ever met you in person was at a rave. 
for Lady Fag. Wow. Oh my god. I don't remember that. I mean, I was Why why would I? <laughs> I was on a lot of drugs, but I remember being like excited to meet you because you were like a cool New York faggot. That's why I'd, I've never been that into ecstasy, like when yeah. it comes to drugs, because personally, um, sorry, I have a really hot new neighbor. He's walking around shirtless. How um, tall? Gonna say 5'11. Okay, that's good. Anyway, um, I've, anytime I've ever taken E, it's just like a memory eraser. Like, it's not even fun for me because I don't remember it. I don't remember it being fun. Everyone has it's such a... Dif- everyone has delete. Such a, yeah. Delete everyone forever. Has, everyone has such a... Okay, Grimes. Everyone has such <laughs> a, um individual journey with ecstasy. I never... It never made me not remember things. It just made me... Really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I probably am as well. I just don't remember. And the reason why I bring it up is because I I remember being at Lady Fag Graves and not remembering them because I had taken ecstasy. Yeah. So it might have been one of those nights. People are like, who is Lady Fag? And to that I say, you had to be there. <laughs> it's a New York. Totally. Just like, just like Gallery Girls, it's a New York of yesteryear that will never come back. I know she's like the Steve Rubell of gay guys. She is. <laughs> Except this, he was a gay guy, but <laughs> she you know was a I mean. yeah, she was like this iconic Four gay guys. Nightlife Spectre who had armpit hair and like not was like as if she's dead. She's still at it, you know. Yeah, she's still she's still going. But I just mean like I feel like that was a real moment. She was she was the eleven one. eleven was crazy times for oh, sure. Yeah. One of the last great parties in New York, I think. That was my favorite party. Anyway, um, what's been I went, like? What's I went your... to jail once after eleven eleven. No, we're not telling that story. Suffice to say, you had to be there. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Um, what is your like? What's one piece of pop culture celeb? Because we have like, we'll have like long voice note text combos about things happening and i always right. appreciate i think you always have like a really apt take what's like one thing happening right now that's like got you either sus or you're sort okay. of in a in a wormhole not to put you on the spot okay well i'll tell you hmm well the things that I pay attention to most tend to be crime. So, uh, Nancy Grace. I'm so Nancy Grace. Nancy and I are on the same page. And right now, the page that Nancy's on is uh, P. Diddy. And the thing about the Diddy scandal is that I'm actually not up on it and I'm embarrassed because it tends, that's the type of thing that normally I would be all over. It's like a big celebrity scandal. You know, the FBI is involved. Everyone's talking about it. It's you, There's obviously a lot to unpack. Uh, yeah. But I'm behind the times on that. One thing that I do want to talk to you about and get your opinion on, because I find it so obnoxious. Um, and I don't mind talking shit because I don't know this person and I feel like they're inviting it um, mm. by what they're doing is like the nonstop daily headlines about Rebel Wilson and, oh. you know, her various, um, you know, coming clean about things that nobody asked about, like <laughs> that she was a virgin until she was 35. Um, no. You know, she, the other day it was like, Adele has always been a bitch to me. I um, saw that. You know, I only became fat because no one would take me serious as an actress because I was too pretty. Um, I knew I couldn't be Kate Blanchett, so I decided to gain weight so I could be fun. Like making up these things, it's like, what is she? she she's like so humiliated about her career that she's having <laughs> to now kind of explain it all away. It's like, girl, what is up? What's happening? Are you okay? Are you we, well? We are. We 
this is actually extremely on brand for sup so i'm i'm glad you brought her up because we've we've both quite laura and i have both questioned like the rebel of it all mm -hmm. um so these are all these are like she's hurling truth bombs at us from her new memoir if i'm correct right is Which, she a little young for a memoir well we don't know how old she is remember there was like a big debate of how old is rebel wilson oh no one well, really knows it's not like she's over 60 we don't know fair she, she could be literally <laughs> 68 years old and we don't know and not that there's anything wrong with being 60 years old as a woman but like i find her to be i'm very the adele quote i saw yesterday she said adele always turns her had she turns away whenever rebel walks by and she feels like adele doesn't like her because she's fat wouldn't you <laughs> <laughs> i who among us who among us has not turned their head from rebel wilson but also rebel is like really skinny like she's really fit she's mm -hmm. i i mean i understand it must have been and she's a lesbian now right she's a lesbian or she's married to a woman i don't know um which tracks for me um i just don't understand the impulse and listen everyone is entitled to tell their story right um not everyone but you know it's like i feel like when you're in when you're a hollywood figure who's sort of a um a character actress or someone along those lines, you would normally wait until like the end of your career to name names and burn mm. bridges like this. Like there's something that feels quite desperate about it um, at this juncture. It's not like someone like, I would never begrudge like Snooki from her memoir <laughs> because Snooki lived through a bona fide phenomenon. You know, like she was at, she was at the eye of the store um, of a certain madness that happened i mean she was at rebel point... is sort of like you know she's kind of an overbooked um i'm not trying to be a huge bitch here rebel wilson's one of those people where she for whatever reason has always been given opportunities to lead like 50 million dollar films you know like yeah. big studio comedies like they just keep giving she has i think she's had more opportunities than like melissa mccarthy at this point yeah and i don't really understand where the fan base is or like what the audience is for that i don't see her on par with like adam sandler um and so it's just interesting that she has so many complaints <laughs> <laughs> you know some people just are they're just picked mm -hmm. and chosen and they are chosen ones and she's just one where she will just continue to book and you know she's made me laugh i i still think her bridesmaids performance was like true lol totally um, a perfect movie she has she's provided the lols but yeah i'm like why you know I guess we're at a point in culture where we were craving a Rebel Wilson retrospective. And <laughs> I have to say, when I read the Adele quote, I actually was like, I'm kind of living for this messiness. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm I'm kind of like, okay, this makes me kind of think she's funny. Like, even if she's not trying to be. Like, I'm now, like, fascinated by her because it's just like, why? Do you know what I mean? Right, You're right. Just like, I, I almost appreciate the just unnecessary candor and kind of you know she should become an insult comic you know like if she she should <laughs> i think she should push further in this direction into more of like a joan rivers um shit talking celebrities direction like i hope this is just the opening salvo yeah or like a kathy or griffin like where we just we just have someone because i think kathy griffin is one of the great gen comedic geniuses of our time and i i just love her and i think that she was really the true successor of joan rivers i think and just being not unafraid to talk shit 
Right. And I kind of think we're we need someone else to take that mantle. So maybe it is Reb. I it's mean, it's a, it's Azalea Banks. Um. True. <laughs> Azalea is perhaps the funniest person alive. It's true. I I think she's a genuinely saying I think she's like one of our greatest cultural commentators. I don't think anyone can nail something as just unoriginal or as un as original and just like fearless as she can. And I've every time she makes a con I've just never heard anyone put it that way. Whenever she when she's on a terror, it's like I've never heard anyone say these things. And it's, it's incredible. And I I don't I almost think like I mean I think I love her music, so I want her to make music forever, but I'm also like you could just write she's like the new Susan Sontag or something. <laughs> really. And it's amazing because it's like you know, I'm going to bring it a little bit back to James Kennedy here. There's an element of just totally unfiltered free associating. And sometimes it takes her a minute to get there. But out of that comes just pure diamonds. I mean, when I see the Azalea Insta stories where it's like you see 70s tick marks of mm -hmm. like a story, I'm like, oh boy. Because I know it's going to, like you said, I know half of it will just be her sort of like on some sort of unhinged slightly like detour about some personal grudge with like a producer or something and then she goes brings it back and I'm just like you're a genius <laughs> I like that she always brings it back to like Indie Sleaze era like or pre-Indie Sleaze like freak folk yeah like early 2000s coachella like yeah there's something that she's she's such an indie person at her roots like she's such a rocker you know she the is the way that she like her yelling at beyonce that she should have um put leslie feist on a track i was howling laughing who else did she say kate kt tunstall <laughs> but then you're kind of like one yeah. hit wonder kt tunstall but then you're sort of like, yeah, yeah, she should have. Yeah, it's actually, she's right. It's time for all of that to come back. She's not wrong. Yeah, she's like, a Azalea is true indie sleaze kind of, right? Sort of like, I feel like she, I equate One her of like her first songs, like at the time when she was first blowing up, like she did a cover of Slow Hands by Interpol that was like one of her kind of big, uh, you know, blogosphere hits. She was into Interpol, she the yeah, yeah, yeahs. She's like, I think that she raps because she's able to, like because she's so talented. But I feel like the music that she was really into was white people music i know she loves karen o <laughs> loves karen o she did a song that where she was kind of doing a karen o uh impression a little bit a couple years ago that was really good i have an yeah. embarrassing truth where Love one her. time back in the day before i really like understood her or just before i before, i think i was like grappling with my own discomfort with the word for a while but when i was like mad that she was saying faggot so much and i remember like posting something like <laughs> this faggot is a fan of your music like you need you know and like i <laughs> and i was like you know you know and i respect that version of myself like i was just grappling with my sexuality and i was still uncomfortable with being gay so I, when I heard her be just so like breathlessly dropping the f bomb, I was very shook in a very like you know ninny kind of way. You were triggered, which I you know, and I was, but I but I think back and I cringe because now I'm like, I love that word. Totally, and some people are allowed to say it. 
she's and allowed, she's literally allowed to say it and the thing is is i mean that's the thing about like personal triggers they're personal it's like not about the person it's about you mm -hmm. and so i i often say i don't get offended which is not entirely true but in the instances when I do, it's, it feels so novel to me and so interesting that I'm like, my reaction has to be like, what does this say about me? Like, why is this bothering me? Let's unpack this. Yeah. As opposed to like lashing out, which I feel like is also maybe I'm finally about as mature as like, a you know, I should have been at age 20 mm -hmm. <laughs> now, 20 years later. Yeah. Um, the internet kind of also invited a lot of reactionary type of behavior from mm -hmm. our generation, I think. But yeah. like I said, Alpha is not here to be offended. Generation Alpha is, I think no. they're going to be more offensive than anybody ever. I think Sheena is actually Gen Alpha in disguise. Like she's... She I dresses she... like it. She was <laughs> like... <laughs> well, let's, get, let's get into this episode. Okay. So I'm Carrie... I'm not Lara. And you're listening to Sexy Unique Podcast. Pump heads. Pump heads. There you go. Um, Sheena is a toddler who's dressed like an adult. Like, I think she's like a toddler on stilts. She was wearing like a toddler's underwear set from Target, lowering herself into a bath on her lanai in this episode, <laughs> which, <laughs> which confused me in many, many ways. But also, this is something that happens when when you have kids i think right. um yeah, you just want to wear comfort you're also talking to them all day and so like there's the mom brain phenomenon of like you're relating to this baby or this yeah. toddler and so you have to put yourself on their level yeah which is why you start doing like baby voice and then mm -hmm. you start adopting their signifiers <laughs> it's real i mean summer is so cute She's and you literally probably remember when you, you start to remember when you were little, when you're with yeah. a, a person like that. I don't know. I'm sure there's there's all kinds of things that take place, but she is infantilizing herself a little more than she used to be. But I'm okay with it because her daughter is like she's a cherub. Um I'm gonna refrain from um complimenting Summer Moon because I think her ego is out of control. Yeah. You know, the social media. She Every time she herself. says something, you see, you can just see dollar signs in Sheena's eyes whenever right. Summer does something cute on camera where you're like, she cannot wait to haul this kid into Nickelodeon. Totes. She's, she's Lady Jessica. Yeah. Stage like, mom. they're pushing that kid to be a star. And I, after watching that documentary last week, I'm not with it. Oh, I still haven't watched it. It's, it's crazy. I don't know if I can do it because that's my child. And, uh, and like we need child actors or else like, you know, it, films won't represent reality because there won't be kids. So I get it. But there's something about the machine of child stardom that is a step too far. Yeah, you know? I think. I think. um Sheena posting through Summer Moon on her stories being like, why did Tom Sandoval, why did Tom Schwartz unfollow me? Like Summer Moon posting that. I was like, okay, this is her <laughs> alter. This is, you know how people are on posting on TikTok now about having altars? Have you seen no. this? There's like religious who, altars? No, there's people who, there's a lot of mainly Gen Z and millennial people who are on TikTok who claim to be multiple personalities and they have like introduced each altar on tiktok with each pronoun oh god and so i'm thinking maybe sheena has adopted it's like she's possessed by summer moon is this like when every musician started pretending to have synesthesia yeah i remember that i hear music and i see colors you know yeah. that was really popular for a minute or like do you see this woman who's like um coming to terms with the fact that i am a sociopath 
I did. I read that. Yeah, I, I I was listening to Tim Dillon talk about it. Um, mm, it was, it's like, do I buy it? I don't know. I believe that sociopaths exist, and I'm sure people with split personalities. Oh, Actually, of course. Am I sure that that exists? Not entirely. <laughs> you know, I've seen Primal Fear. He was mm-hmm. faking it. Right. Um, it's something that seems like something actors are drawn to. Um for creative reasons yeah i don't know about this i don't know about all the psychological maladies just putting them out there and owning it i don't know if that's yeah. really helpful you know for anybody i think people i believe in multiple personalities but i think i feel like people who have them are not thinking to like let's film this mama no they're murdering people and then they're waking <laughs> up covered in blood and they don't remember anything that's what they're doing Kohlberger. It's like which of your split personalities is the personality that brags about all the other personalities? The one who's on TikTok. <laughs> um, we see Joe and Schwartz in Schwartz's house. Joe is wearing a giant bucket hat. It's sort of like a bucket hat that lost its heart on. Yeah. It's like a, a drooped. It's a droopy hat. Um, it's like a fisherman's hat made out of raffia or something. And they're making some sort of, like, I feel like they were like cheese doodles or something. They're like I thought one... I thought they were using a juicer. I know, but I feel like they were putting like savories in there. But maybe I maybe I was just. But then it's like kind of a golden color, and Joe goes, "Oh, it looks like butter's poop." The dog, and I was like, "If your dog has that color poop, he needs to go <laughs> to the vet because that's that dog is eating not good things." That felt like an excruciatingly contrived setup. Yeah. And her being like, I don't know how to do this. Show me. Like, I don't know. What was the... It's the production. Sometimes, I mean, I'm going to bring up production a lot, which is Let's maybe go. not something that you guys typically focus on. It's um, okay. But I have a sort of a producer hat on yes. when I watch things. And I just, I, I start wondering, like, how much, how big was the crew? Mm. They loaded into Schwartz's apartment. They said, We're gonna film you guys doing Do something some- together, something cute, rom com with the two of you, because their relationship is a storyline now. And it's like they play with a juicer for five seconds and that's it. Like yeah. how how much did they film that day? Why are we just getting this little the little clips at the beginning of the show? It's like I just think of everything that wasn't used. Yeah, I think there's a... I imagine everything else that was filmed in that apartment that day was probably really unhinged or just beyond uncomfortable and boring. (laughs) There's probably a lot of... There's probably like eight hours of B-roll of Joe and Tom just doing clown. Clown core. Going... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> boop, boop. look at me um, Jos- Joseph him going Joseph Joseph no and her going whoa <laughs> like falling um, yeah she's like olive oil she's very olive oil mm-hmm. um, Katie I can't, wait, I can't wait for her to fall off a boat yeah he needs me Oops. what's that song that Shelly sings he needs me he needs me <laughs> That's Joseph. That's Joe. Katie, Allie, and Lala are doing an outdoor workout. at looks like Echo Park. Like fools. So embarrassing. Um, and Katie was like, I don't understand why people do this. Me neither. People, people want to work out. And like, I just want to drink wine. Um, Lala is hosting an, like a water tasting And I was like, okay, I, you know, I'm, I, you're my sober sister. Like, right. I'm there with you, girl. But I'm also like, I'm not going to make people do that. Yeah, it's a water sommelier event. Um, I don't want to punish my friends because I'm a fucking addict and can't. I've lost my privileges. Like, can we talk about eventizing sobriety? Like, it's sort of like. And, you know, I was thinking about it and maybe it's, 
maybe I applaud this. Mm. I'm trying to talk myself into it. Like, you know, it's good for people to socialize. Yeah. We're also used to like being on our phones all day and kind of isolating that I'm like, well, on the one hand, she's doing things like they're doing yoga in the park together. She's having a water sommelier event. It's like, that's good. People are hanging out. Like, yeah. who am I to judge this? But it also feels, you know, like something the producers thought up. Like, hey, you're sober. What if you did a tasting for water? Yeah. Like, it's like, why don't you just go have a picnic or like go to a movie or do anything else normal that doesn't involve drinking? Yeah. It... Why come up with this strange new thing? It feels suspiciously to me like Lala is planting some seeds that she's about to disrupt the water space with some type of sparkling water company. I think you're right on. I had kind of had that same thought. This feels She's like, like a... water is my passion. It's like since when? Yeah. What are you oh, talking about? I know. <laughs> are we, like, oh, we've all known everyone knows this about me. I love water. Water um, is my thing. It's my water thing. is my thing. Yeah. It it just yeah. I mean, as someone in rec- I understand it's like hard to find things like I I go out and stuff, but it is like it's hard to find things to be social at when you can't partake. So I get, mm-hmm. okay, let's try to make like, put like a little fun spin on this, but this just feels to me, it feels like weirdly reductive. I don't know. Of like recovery. Does that sound like really dramatic? I don't know. It just feels like I'm just, yeah, have a picnic. Well, she also texted them at one point, like if you want to spike your water, BYOB bitches and it's like okay well yeah what's did the producers put a gun to her head and say that too we gotta get him drunk I mean thank god she (laughs) did because we got the best episode of the season so far it's it's true I also really like I mean we're jumping way ahead but the fact that like after the water tasting which seemed so low calorie they ordered Pizza Hut and I know two liter bottles of full calorie Pepsi and ranch and ranch well Um, the missing ranch Anne and Ariana have a little chat because Anne is kind of interviewing with Ariana to become her potential assistant. She wants out. She's like, Sandoval makes me do all his dirty work. Literally, I have to pick up his dirty clothes. Um, Ariana reveals that Sandoval wears his socks and underwear for days without changing them. And I knew this. I could feel that he was that he's stinky oh you believe her a little bit i don't no i i'm here to i'm here to throw some bombs let's on sexy unique pod let's do it no look i had a theory last i was like trying to i could just feel that tom's room he might smell good and like lather himself with like lotions and ointments and like i'm sure he smells fresh but I just mean I feel like his room is dirty. Okay. Have you seen her room? No, their house is a, it's quarters. <laughs> I felt like her comments about his personal hygiene were petty and were a deflection um, of accountability for their debilitated sex life that preempted and in many ways motivated his fair. Wow. And I'm going to put a fair and scare quotes because I have opinions about that. What are they? Which which go a little against the grain here. You're that, allowed to say whatever you want. You're a guess. I think Ariana and Sandoval were in a fake relationship. The fact that they were outspoken about the fact that they weren't having sex. I'm sorry, that's not an affair. He got a girlfriend. I think he was actually being really polite, not bringing it up to her. (laughs) So what about that? Listen. Men have sex. Like, it's just a thing. Men and women are different about sex. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. I also think Ariana's a lesbian. We don't have to get into all of that right now either. She's in a new fake relationship. We don't have to get into that either. (laughs) 
but I feel like it's actually incredibly millennial what happened because the betrayal wasn't a romantic betrayal. The betrayal was a betrayal of their brand. I think that Ariana and Tom had gotten so in business together. You know, mm. their house is like their giant Amazon box cluttered, like hype house, merch skewed, like Wayfair chaired hype house. <laughs> and it's all for the TV show. And then when he, when the affair was, it's not even about him having the affair, when the affair was revealed and found out, it kind of blew up their joint venture that they were in together. And it put the show and threw the show into question. Um, it it also made Ariana have to work at something, you know, which was she had to plan her next moves without him doing it. Like, I just feel like there's so much more going on to like why she's hurt about this than what she's explicitly saying. I think that it's, there's like a kind of a party line of the way that she talks about it and what she's upset about. But I think that her... I think that the house, like the fight over the house, speaks more volumes than anything else going on. Well, let's just, you know what, I think we should just get, because there's so much, and this is a long episode, I think, let's just get to the the water. Sure, sure, I sure. mean, everything else in between, it's like, Schwartz sees Summer Moon, I don't give a fuck. I, I think he's so <laughs> weird with children, not in like a creepy way, just like he doesn't know how to like talk to children. He's like, they're weird. Why do I have to talk to them? Well, there was some there was a part that I did want to talk about because okay. it it kind of um it said a lot to me in this weird way where I went back, I rewound it because I was like, this is so strange what's happening here. So Anne shows up and she's wearing a blazer. <laughs> <laughs> she has 90s bangs. Anne has a confessional. Anne has a confessional. Anne goes upstairs to say hi to Sandoval. By the way, we actually open that whole setup in Sandoval's home gym with his purple recessed party lighting. And the camera does like a 360 spin and lands on him and like a very Ari- audacious. It was like Ari Aster. <laughs> yeah, it was like, and I want to commend the producers for trying new things. Like it felt like they were trying to evoke like an enter the void type uh-huh. of thing. with. with part away. Yeah, it's like his psychedelic... P and P, his like P and P lighting, his P and P lighting, his like his weird obsession with psychedelia, him go- having like a personal spiral. It felt like it was like they were trying to evoke something with that. I started laughing, <laughs> and says hi to Ariana. She goes upstairs, and sort of says a few lines to Sandoval of like, "Hey, I'm just gonna talk to Ariana about some stuff," and he's looking down. He will not look at her. He's unbelievably rude to her. Like, doesn't barely acknowledges that she's talking to him. He's so, he's such a rude, he's so rude to women. It's insane. I was like, I, I've never seen such shitty behavior. Like, to not even be like, hi, how are you? Like, to someone who's working for you is so disgusting to me. But then I was like, I was trying to wrap my head around why he would be behaving like that. And I was like, is this actually some kind of immature protest against and now participating in the theatricality of like plot exposition at the behest of the producers that she comes in and is like, here's what's going on. Like she's telling him what's happening on his TV show. I think like, that's I think that's accurate. I think he's he's like, oh, you're one of them now. You've been like sent up here to say this to me. You're miked. You're you're like literally yeah. inserting yourself in my show. And this is like incredibly demoralizing because now this is a plot that I have to participate in. We're like Ariana's trying to steal my fucking assistant. Yeah, I think he's it's very like me against the world for him and the stakes are really high which yeah. they are in a lot of ways but i think he's so backed into a corner that now he he's reverted to like child i mean he always seemed a little childish but now extra so he's reverted to sort of a childlike reaction to when he's not getting his way and I, yeah. think, I think you're right. I think it's almost like Anne is weirdly like doming him in this moment. And I think he's like, you're my worker. And 
also good for her i love it i think Anne like is- thank god she needs to get she needs to get out of that situation that's for sure i think Anne is also like my th- my dark theory is that she's a producer She's smarter than she wants to portray herself. She's kind of doing a new... She infantilizes herself. She just does like a kind of gibberish baby voice thing. Well, she's also like in her mid-40s. Do you know that? Yeah, she's trying to like, you know, lower expectations so she can manipulate the situation and go off because you're dealing with two shitheads here. She's like, goofy. She's goofy <laughs> as a fox. So Sandoval, <laughs> Sandoval like eavesdrops on their combo and he gets really mad that Anne like shit talks him and then later it's it's giving Shakespeare it is (laughs) he's like hiding listening later it's revealed that Anne was like bawling to Ariana because on the phone because Tom like berated her at the kitchen island okay and where were the cameras what is that why are the cameras missing all the drama I know I don't like when we have to take Ariana's word for it with things. I didn't. I wasn't even sure if I believed the dog story. Okay, so we get to the the <laughs> Martin the Water story. Now I I believe it because then Sandoval verified it. But yeah. I was like, this seems very convenient that the Lala saying something not even nice, but like generally not totally hostile about Sandoval, and she's like, well, he tried to kill my dog. It's like it felt like a little one upping when that happened. But what, what I really want to know is why are they doing this tasting in Burbank? Not that anything's wrong with Burbank, but just this house. I need to not ever be in this house. I'm so darked out by James and Allie and their house. And hippie in quotes. I'm a I'm a hippie truther, and I think hippie needs to go justice for Raquel in this moment about the dog. We saw Hippie's de- devilish side come out when he was um, trying to murder Katie. Yeah. <laughs> he he would try to kill her. <laughs> but music, just like music. Music um, kills Kate. Okay. Katie thinks that Brock tried to get revenge on her for spilling the tea that she fucked Big Dick Max. And She thinks it's because Brock is mad that in previous seasons, Katie has, like, shit on him for being, like, a deadbeat dad to his other kid. That was an interesting theory, but I think that Brock gave himself away um, when he was talking to Sheena about it and bringing up things that katie had it's more about revenge on katie for katie's drama with sheena Mm. i don't think he's hung on to the stuff that katie said about him he was more upset about last season i think brock is very loyal to sheena he is she is his queen and he scares me he's also kind of shitty to her which i don't like like there are things he does where he was like sitting with Summer Moon and he's like, guess what we're doing today? And Sheena's like, don't tell her. Like, don't tell her we're going to the beach. And he's like, we're going to the beach to have fun. It's like, he just undermines her constantly, which I don't like. Yeah. I I think he's, I don't like the way he talks to her in public and I don't like the way he talks to her mom. I think he's He's a little bit of like a Neanderthal and like woman at home. Woman. You know, so I think he's he's scary in that way a little. He's I loyal to Sheena. I think it's darker. I think it's like I think he has this personality of overcompensation mm. where it's like his need to lecture Sandoval, like his need to lecture Katie and call her out. Yeah. Blurt blurting out Sheena's secrets to people. Like he's the moral arbiter of Marina Del Rey because it makes him feel less small for abandoning his previous family. And I think that if he really wants to feel better, he should try and become like a kinder person and a better listener and a little more understanding and supportive. Um anyway. He gets very he gets very he gets very involved with lady drama mm-hmm. and 
I I do think about Yolanda Hadid when she whenever Ken would get involved with the Beverly Hills drama of the women and she would always go, Why are you getting involved? She goes, My husband would never get involved with the women drama. And I'm kinda yeah. like because he hates you and he's leaving you. Because <laughs> he doesn't care. He's already Sometimes made his... the ones who get involved tend to stick around. I mean, look at PK. That's true. Um just saying. So they're all assembled. Martin is like this like gay German and he's he's like, Yes, come outside for the wada. And and they have they assemble everyone on either side. Tom and Ariana are in the same place again, which thank God. Um he talks about water for a second, he gives a spiel, and then Tom Sandoval like he's like, hey, I did that yesterday. And he goes, Well, you went to a tasting yesterday? And Tom goes, No, man, I'm just kidding. And then you see Ariana just kind of like leave her body for a second at that joke, which I thought was kind of funny. I felt that way too. I feel like Tom's jokes are getting worse and worse. It's like it's very harrowing watching him yeah. try and act natural. Like when they were at the beach, James comes up and he's like, yeah, cool necklace. Because it's like the mic necklace yeah. that they have to wear. And it's like it's like oh, we're on TV. Like, okay. Yeah, we know. Are you he's, okay, Tom? <laughs> he's old as hell. He's really grasping. Um, he just wants to say anything to anyone. Yeah, he's. I think he and Schwartz are just having a really hard time, knowing that like the rug has been lifted up on them, and that everyone now knows for sure that they're both like bad guys, and not like because I think. Tom really coasted for years on being like the cool guy, the giving guy, the you know, center of the group, the guy who's mm-hmm. always like, come over, like I'm the preeminent host of the party. And Schwartz was always like, oh, you know, I'm just kind of this like non confrontational, like, you know, I, yeah, sometimes I come off as like a little pussy, but I'm like, I'm really at the end of the day, like, I mean well. And now we know, like, no, you're a rat. Absolutely. You're an evil incarnate. And, and Tom is just an idiot. Tom and Sandoval. he's dyed his hair orange, which I thought was really strange. Yeah. It looks like it's sort of like looks like um henna hair dye. And he's wearing like a very Peter Pan looking shirt. I was like this walking Peter Pan syndrome. Like Yeah. Dress your age, my friend. It was giving like Mr. Rogers meets Peter Pan. And he's he's kind of giving a Aurora shooter. I'm not gonna lie, with like the dyed hair. Yeah, I don't know. I think that it's like Schwartz has this really uncanny ability to make you think like, oh, he's harmless, or like I could outsmart him. But like, I feel like he's really pulled one over on everyone for a very long time. And that's why it's kind of crumbling. And I think that's why him and Sandoval are just so unhinged and so like awkward and corny because they just, I think Schwartz is a lot smarter than Sandoval. I think Schwartz is very cunning. I think Sandoval's a bit, he's a big ego, but he's dumb as shit. And I think the two of them are just in this twilight, in this kind of haze of being seen for the first time for who they are it's, it's true and it's interesting to me that schwartz's charm still works on people yeah like it feels like he's I, i've yet to see ariana crack a smile at something schwartz has said but everyone else seems fine with him even katie katie will forever be sort of charmed by him i think i ariana... think she feels comfortable yeah. around him she knows how to what to expect and how to deal with him at the very least i think ariana to her credit has had his number maybe totally it's like she just sees she completely sees through it um there was one line that it was like maybe my favorite line in the episode i mean there were there's a lot that we're about to get into but before the water event when ariana went over to katie's and Katie, who, by the way, is 
dressed like full stone butch blues and <laughs> with this like denim vest <laughs> like <laughs> she's truly um like linda perry <laughs> she's like you know who she thinks she is though she's like angelina jolie and foxfire yeah like you know ready to run away with jenny shimizu and never look back yeah um you know but she's she's, she's dyke giving on cherry, a bike she's giving cherry jones <laughs> she's she's so cherry jones um and she's like she she kind of makes like i forget what they're talking about but she made like a um a segue into what the producers obviously told her to talk about and i'm going to commend her because this i'm starting to see through of course uh, it only took 9000 episodes but i'm seeing through the way that the show is produced and how they have to bring they're sitting down to bring something up yeah. that will be brought up later and it's like in this case she makes a very awkward segue into being like I don't like this invasion of privacy thing that's been going around. I feel like my privacy was invaded when Sheena was tracking us like that. And then Ariana says, with like the gravity of war, I never had Tom's location. I was like, that's because you look the other way. I mean, it is like... You didn't want to know. You didn't want to know. I think there's truth to that. I think, I think, uh, just from the set, uh, it was, they were pretty blatant at some points, I think. I just think there's been, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, everyone's been too hard on Sandoval because I feel like this was a long time coming. Yeah. Um, and, I think that with maybe the exception of Sheena, I think everybody on the show is a terrible person. Yeah. Um, but I think that Ariana has really gotten away with being overpraised, lionized, made the victim and all of it. And I feel like she doesn't ever take any accountability for anything. Like, ever. Um whether it's the dog choking on the chicken satay that she left in her room because she's mm. a hoarder, you know? Like, it's like, no one put that in your room. I, I don't know. It's like, at, at one, if that happened to my pet, I would be like, oh my God, I can't believe I left that there. I'm never doing that again. She doesn't even say little things like that. It's like, everything is always somebody else's fault. You know? I mean, I and think I'm just Lala... Like, you I are think... an adult. Like... Yeah. This was a relationship you were in. You navigated it a certain way, and this happened. I'm not saying it's her fault that it happened, but no, she played a part not. in it, you know? I mean, I think Lala actually says, like, you're the one that left your the trash in your room. Right. Lala yeah. seems to be on the same wavelength as me with calling out some of these things. Well, it's interesting watching season four right now where they are in the show that Ariana... People are hanging out with Kristen again, and Sheena and Ariana are ha and Katie are having a falling out because Ariana's like, "You guys can't hang out with her, and hang out with me." So you have to basically pick one or the other. So it's interesting that this is like repeating now with Sandoval, and Ariana sort of it. It's a thing, you know what I mean? Like she's mm -hmm. been, she's had this happened before and i think you know i think what sandoval did and raquel did to her sorry rachel did to her was like really horrific <laughs> but right. i do think at a certain point you have to like you have to just give at least give other people a little grace if they choose to want to be associated with this person you don't have to you don't have to be associated with him at all and that's your choice and i and that's a respectable choice you can move out what she's doing now which i think is great um but i also love 
I love seeing them together because there's good drama. But also, also them staying in the house together. That's she's part of that decision. You know what I mean? It's like there's things that she's complains about that are that she's directly involved in. And she, I just find that she isn't very accountable overall. And I think that it's interesting to me that Lala is like, well, she's worked a she's worked a program. Exactly. Sometime. I was gonna ask. I was gonna say. Do you think this is because she's been in the program? So she do. T- she takes personal accountability very seriously because she even with like when she was talking to Lisa about calling Raquel, I felt like as much as that was very produced and felt like it was to try and lure Raquel back onto the show, I think that it was also her being like, maybe I've been unfair to this person on some level. Whether and, or not she deserved it, was that right of me? I don't know. You know, she questions these things. She was deeply unfair. Yeah. She was, I mean, the barrage against Rachel, Rachel, I almost said, at that reunion was, is still like shameful, I think. Um, it was wild, wild. I anyway, think Lala she- is, but I do think that, and some people go through recovery and are still assholes. That's the thing they don't talk about a lot. But I think she, I feel like I can feel the program coming off her sometimes in a good way. Yeah. Um, it makes sense. But, and she's also, I think she's just been, what Lala went through was worse than what, I'm sorry, than what like Scannaval was. Thank you. That's what I, I think too. I think Lala, like, the kind of man that she was with, that she had a baby with, this fucking guy who's like basically like a mini Harvey Weinstein, allegedly, 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 and like this custody issue and being a young, I mean, you know, she she got involved with a married man, like she has that on her, I think. So she she knew what she was doing to some degree, but she's a young she's a young woman who has a baby. And with this fucking piece of shit who has a lot of power, weirdly still, and she's, I think when you have a child in the mix, it just makes things, the ante is just up so much more. And I think it's humbled her in a lot of ways. I think it must be really difficult for her to sit and watch Ariana victimize herself to the degree that she is, having been through what she's been through. Yeah, but I... And this is a debate. I I hear what you're saying. I don't think I think what I think it's more the culture victimized Ariana and she's just I think she's actually just really savvy in some ways and is like running with it, which I respect. I think the right. culture around Sandoval, the reaction they did, I think everyone else sort of like you know was like, "Ooh, we'll be we'll, like we love, you know, and like coddling her and I think she's just like, "All right, I'm going to get paid to take out the trash. Right. And it feels also kind of redolent of like this battle of the sexes type of, uh, you know, like current wave feminist politics of like, yeah, nothing I have ever done is wrong. He's wrong. Like, fuck right. him. I'm perfect. I'm a boss. I'm a bad bitch. Yada, 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 which I'm a boss. Once again, Generation Alpha is going to have some fatigue with that. So she should be thinking ahead a little bit further. Um, That's next year. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Tube Tops are back. Tube Tops are back. Dana is there. Remember Dana? Wait, there's there's something I really wanted to go back to for one second. Oh, shit. What was it? Do, 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 do. I don't remember. Oh, just when Lala, when Lala, also just interjecting. Yeah. When Lala called Ariana out for having the trash in her room, she said, didn't you do a trash bag commercial? Don't you know how to put your trash away? <laughs> I thought that was really good. Yeah, I mean, she's... Touche. I think, and from what I hear, Ariana and... I mean, I, I, I talked about this in the pod before, but apparently they have a huge fight on the reunion. Oh, good. So I think I think they're, like, not cool with each other. So Lala is sort of... Everyone, I think, you see everyone, you know, while Ariana... So basically what happens is they all... They all taste the water. Yum, yum, yum. Mm, It's all really good. (laughs) Everyone goes, "Mm, this is so good. (laughs) And then Martin is like kind of thriving. This is the happiest he's ever been. Right. And then the sommelier departs. The tasting is over. And then, as you said before, they're like, let's get some pizza. 
I wish they had hired um, HRH Collection to do the water tasting instead of this guy. She, I think her water tasting went viral before he ever appeared. I'm she not needs saying that's to be... where he got the idea, but... <laughs> I want her to be on a reality show. Fully. I have a theory about her, though, that she's, like, completely antisocial. Like, if she has to be around people, she'll just, she'll just not talk. Yeah. She only talks to her phone. Yeah, I think she's not someone I want to be around. Never. The worst vibes. <laughs> like, I think she's a, probably a, an evil person. Absolutely. The guys are like, so, Sanibel, what happened with T? And he goes, with T? I don't know. Just chilling. Cool, and they go, cool, they go, are, you, are you dating other people? He goes, yeah, I'm dating a few people. Okay. Well, he's dressed like um, Jordan Knight from New Kids on the Block, looking yeah. insane. <laughs> In his, like, raver candy necklace aloe yoga hat pink tinted lip balm pastel nail polish flooded raver pants and his hideous jw anderson for converse platform shoe <laughs> yeah the aloe which... the aloe representation is pretty wild he can't stop wearing aloe he's fully committed then the pizza comes and the girls are like, "Did they provide ranch?" And Sandoval goes, "Oh no, let me go check. Let me go check." He's trying to be the hero, mm -hmm. so he runs out to the delivery man to try to get. And everyone's like, "Oh, that's nice." And then Ariana goes, "He's doing too much," which I was like, "You're right. He is correct. Correct." Um, yada yada yada. Uh, Dana, Dana, Dana. <laughs> I just wrote, "Oh my god, Dana." <laughs> Her hair looked great. She looked great. Um. And, you know, things like with Max and Dana still being around, despite being, I guess, fired off the show or per maybe canceled, it's it's all very vague to me in my memory. Yeah. Um, it's weird when you, like, are reminded that this is an actual group of friends, that this is an, a real social scene, that, like, yeah. someone leaving the show does not mean they leave the group. Yeah, Dana is Very still... strange. Dana is, like, Katie's best friend. Wild. Like, she's always there and she's still doing comedy and they don't want her on the show because they're too cheap they don't want to pay another person like what is this like why not just have her back on well it's kind of like how they they said to peter who's been on the show since it started you can come back for season 11 but we're not going to pay you and he was like okay so he's well, gone yeah <laughs> gone gone with the wind gone with the wind they're brutal with the show that's true no wonder ariana doesn't want to pay for anything yeah i don't blame her schwartz has jaundice <laughs> either really bad bronze like he's wearing foundation but he has yellow skin it might be the shirt and the hair the combo it's like yeah it's setting the whole filter off he um, and katie talk about her fucking max and he's like bubba you really fucked me over with that like that was not cool he's one of my best friends and she goes what do you mean you did the same <laughs> thing to me when you hooked up with rachel and he's like yeah, but I just kissed her. Like, it wasn't even... And, like, clearly, we all know, like, that was obviously a ruse. And she's right. like, well, it still hurt my feelings. You did it first. <laughs> He's like, okay, well, I didn't fuck Rachel. Max is, like, my current really good friend. I mean, I like that Schwartz is finally saying the quiet part loud. It feels like this has been something that no one is willing to, like, go against on camera. Um, when he's, like... Raquel was barely in the friend group. You know, like earlier in the episode when she's meeting with Anne, of course, Ariana is giving her same refrain about like, well, my roommate will be really upset if he finds out that I'm meeting with his assistant, but he didn't seem to care about having sex with my friend while I was at my grandmother's funeral. And it's like, when are we going to disabuse ourselves of this notion that Ariana and Raquel were friends? Yeah, I think the way everyone was framing it is like, even Lisa was saying it, which I'm like, that makes sense because she's the producer, but saying your best friend, your best, best, best. Everyone kept going, best friend. That was your best friend. She it's was like, your best friend. It's like. And Rachel was like, no, we barely were friends. We just like, yeah, we're around each other. It's still shitty what she did. Like she was in her house all the time and like. I think I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. I think Rachel is She was down her coworker basically. Yeah. And you know, I think that I think that the root of the rage 
has less to do with, again, romantic betrayal and more to do with being humiliated in the eyes of the public, that he was willing to do this, that this would become a plot on the show, that he essentially was going to leave her for Raquel. It's like, how dare you try to embarrass me? And I agree. I think that's worse. But, you know, they can't talk about the show on the show. So they have to find ways to telegraph the emotional betrayal. So she's like, she was my best friend. And it's like, come on, we weren't born yesterday. I kind of wish they would just go there and talk about the dynamics of the show and how it played into this whole thing. Yeah. No, I mean, I think the truth, for me, the truth is somewhere in the middle. I think Rachel's downplaying it. And I think Ariana has like sort of overplayed it. So I right. think there's I think they were friends. I don't think they were that close, but I do think it was enough they were friendly enough and close enough where it was really fucked up. And yeah, I think I mean, Rachel it was right under her nose. It makes her look stupid, you know. And it was a violation like she was fucking her in his in her she was fucking her man in their house yeah. while she was there. Like it's just like but I do think it's disgusting. The ruse of their I think Tom Schwartz did blur it out, so I I too respect that. But also, I watched this episode uncensored on Peacock, so to hear them say "fuck" is so jarring oh, wow. for some reason. I need to do that. But Katie's like, "No, no, it's okay that I did it, because you never took me seriously. You never took my feelings. You never considered me during our whole marriage, and that's why we are not together." And he's like, "No, Baba, I always." He's like, "No, Baba, I always considered you," and she's like, "No, you didn't." No compassion, no, no empathy, com- no empathy, no compassion. And he's like, "All right, Bubba, can we just like, can we call it a truce and start over and like get get a drink together and be friends and again?" And, she's, and he's like, "Mama, kudos for saying that." He's like, "Mama, for kudos, spilling, for spilling, kudos, Mama." And she's like, "Maybe, <laughs> maybe." And then she cracks a smile. She's like, "Okay, we'll be friends again." She's like, "Babe," <laughs> and then and then the shit really goes down. Okay, this conversation is taking place outside. Meanwhile, Ariana is ranting about the dog murderer so tom walks um, by the group and she goes well you know Anne got fired because she, tom overheard because the attempted dog murderer was eavesdropping on our conversation and then tom turns and he has this look of like to me it was scary rage yeah where he was like stone cold rage at ariana such resentment and she got him where she wanted him and he is a little frozen. bit of fear i think there was a little fear mixed in there because he was like, here's the moment. Well, yeah, and it's also like, this is, it's almost, it was cathartic, I think, for all of us watching and for the people in the room, even if it was tense, because it was finally they're having a conversation. Right. And it was amazing because it happened seamlessly, so seamlessly that he goes, he was like, she's talking about me. And then she looked at him and started yelling at him. And in that moment when she was addressing him directly, you just saw Lala's eyes bug out of her skull because she was like so hyper aware of what was happening. Like, so, they're having a conversation in front of cameras. Here we fucking go. Also, the fight felt so intimate still. Like, it, they still felt like a couple in a weird way. Like, it just had this, like, they're the couple that fights in front of their friends. And, like, it felt so explosive because there was still, like, a weird owner, like, t- ownership of each other in a weird way, like, we're, st- you know what I mean? It, it still felt like they were together in, in some weird way. Maybe it's just me, because I'm just used to them being together, but it still felt like a f- an intimate fight that a couple was having. Hmm. Interesting that you say that, because I felt the same way, and it actually made me th- feel like they're not being so silent in that Valley Village house when cameras aren't around. I feel like they probably scream at each other nonstop. They just are pretending that they have this divide where they're not in contact but living in the same house. I don't believe oh. that for a second anymore. Oh, I think I think they've had some drag down fights. And I and Ariana is so angry at him and she's like you fucking tried to kill my dog. You are so careless. These are my children. My lawyer will be in touch with you about your attempted murder of my children. And he goes, "My children? What are you talking about?" She goes, my lawyer is very professional. Very professional. This moment was giving Parker Why Posey isn't your screen. lawyer responding to me? <laughs> my lawyer is very professional. It gave me Parker Posey and Scream 3 going, my lawyer liked that. Yeah. 
And it's just everyone in the room is held hostage. No one, everyone is frozen. No one even wants to move a muscle because the you can feel the hate, the burning rage and hatred between them. Shino is petrified physically, like she was trembling like a chihuahua. Poor Shina. Ariana would say I, something this to fight Tom. It was harder on Shina than it was on Ariana and Tom, like, <laughs> as she likes to say. Like Scandaval, this was this moment right here was the the person taking it the hardest was Sheena. Sheena, poor Sheena, she's the real victim here in this fight. Actually, the real victim in the fight is Katie and Schwartz, who are missed it completely because they're still outside. And Katie's like, "You made out Sheena during indie sleaze in Las Vegas. You and Sheena, you and Sheena did that to me behind my back. Yeah, how could you do that?" <laughs> and then she's like, "What is that noise? Are they screaming in there?" And he's like, yeah, let's not go in, Bubba. And she's like, okay, let's go over here into the pool. And then Ariana is just like, she said something to Tom, like almost il- trying to elicit a reaction. And then when he gives her that, she goes, don't fucking talk to me. Never fucking look at me again. Don't fucking talk to me. Don't fucking talk. And, he, and he's like, blah, 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 blah. he goes outside and then he comes back in. He okay. can't get enough. They love it. They're addicted to each other. They're this addicted. was also this. this Do you feel that scene? too? Oh, yeah. But I think that I I just want to say, again, focusing on production a little bit. And it's not even production's fault. It's the network's fault. This was the scene that they've been teasing out all season in all mm-hmm. of the commercials where they were purposefully misleading about what the conversation was about. Right. Which annoys the fuck out of me. Because right. in, in the promos, it has her saying, edited to say, my lawyer will be dealing with you. And my house and my children. Yeah. And he goes, your children. And so you think she's talking about her embryos because weren't there embryos? Wasn't yeah, she, there froze, embryo? she froze her egg. She confirmed that on me and Laura's live show, actually. Right. But actually what she was saying was like, you left the door open and like, that's how you treat my children, meaning yeah. her, pet, her pets. Yeah. I think it's like, okay. that was a little confused. That was confusing. I mean, she said before she she considers her pets her children, which like I get because I consider my dog my child. But I think that was it was it was weirdly like almost like a Freudian slip in a way. It felt mm-hmm. so I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like it felt like she was. It was chopped and screwed. They chopped and screwed that whole conversation. Tried to make it seem like something else, and you know, it irritates me. Yeah. But I love. I mean, this fight was. But you know was, what? That's the game. This was the Kept most explosive. <laughs> this was the most explosive thing I've seen on the show since Scandal. We needed this. Yeah. They fight absolutely. Like, they fight like, oh my god, their fighting is charged. It's really ugly. But it's also like kind of hot. Am I fucked up? There are times where I'm watching Ariana and I'm a little bit. I'm on Lala's page where it's like. What is this anger doing for you? Yeah. I don't know. Like, she, it just seems debilitating in a sense. Right. Like, she's not happy. And it, and it irritates me how happy she pretends to be sometimes. Like, when she's arriving at the beach the next day, she, like, makes some comment about how it's hard to walk sexy. And then she does this big fake laugh. She's like, <laughs> like, as she's approaching. It's like, yeah. girl, no one believes you're having fun for a second. <laughs> she's you're doing capable. I mean, Sheena says this was the best thing that ever happened to her. She doesn't appreciate it, though, yet. I don't think. She's not there yet. At least in the show. I think in real life, she seems like... I, I like that she's doing Love Island next after Chicago. Like, I think she's having... I think she's getting it. Yeah. My hope for Ariana is that she stays in New York. I think, and I I have felt this way all season until this episode, that I think she should leave the show. And... Not because I think she has better opportunities, but because I think that it's not tenable to have this division in the cast. Yeah. And if it were real life, if she wants to keep these friendships in real life, you know, which is questionable, but if she does, they can still hang out with Sandoval and have it not be a betrayal because they're filming, which is the same thing they're doing now. Yeah. One of them has got to go, Sandoval or Ariana on the show, I think. We'll see who it is. The boys later go get Kyle Chan, Sandoval, and Schwartz go get Paella together. And Sandoval's wearing the gayest little vest. And he's walking literally like John Travolta, <laughs> Saturday Night Fever. He's like, he's having, he's fuging. He's having, he's in, he's completely <laughs> demented. 
they have Maine lobster paella at this bar, and Tom goes, man, this is exactly what I wanted. Said no one about paella. Okay. Yeah. And... <laughs> Do you think it's because Tom has wanted fame so badly for so long that now he has it, and even though it's come in this, like, rotten package, he's kind of ecstatic about it? He loves it. He likes, I think he's appreciating the aftermath of Scandal more than Ariana is appreciating it. And I don't think that has to do with Ariana being wronged. I think it's just like where the, it's the way that I think some men move on more quickly. No one is having, yeah. The brighter side. The only person who hasn't benefited from Scandal is Rachel. I know, but has she? She has gone rogue. She's gone rogue, but like, what, like, to what end? Everyone on the show has monetized Scandival, except Rachel, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, she's monetizing it, but she's not monetizing it well. I think no. that, like, and she's really portraying herself as a victim in a way that feels brainwashed. We don't need to get into it. Something about her recovery, whatever she program she went to, whatever place she went, she is regurgitating everything they said to her. It doesn't feel like a real inventory is taking place. It's very platitude, surface level. No one's. No one is taking accountability here. Rachel included. No one is taking like, Rachel. I like. I empathize. I don't like anyone getting like, you know, the sacrificial lamb is never. I hate seeing that. Even if they what they did was wrong, I hate when someone gets like, stoned in the public square. Uh huh. But. I'm also like, you're annoying because you, what you did was really shitty too. And you have yet really to say that you were brainwashed by Tom. You were brainwashed by the production. No, no, no. Like, I believe that you were, you're a very impressionable person. I get that. But like, you're a 27 year old adult. You're an adult. You chose to, you chose to do this. You got into this affair. She always says, I never meant to hurt anyone. Yes, you did. You hurt someone. You were you were visiting his parents at the holidays. You were taking photos and lolling at your boyfriend, your secret boyfriend who dressed up like you on Halloween in front of his life partner. Like you, you did a lot of shitty things and she has yet to own up to that. Exactly. I mean, the person who should be owning up the most is Sandoval. Of course. Of course. It does feel like he has tried to worm his way out of it in many respects. Like, as though he had no choice. Or as though, like, you know, Ariana pushed him to this. And, in effect, what he did was he tried to manipulate a way out of the relationship and into a new one. And I think part of the reason he did that was because he did it to Kristen. And he did it with Ariana. And it worked in his favor. So if he did it once and was rewarded for it, of course he's going to try to do it again. Yeah. And I feel like... That all has not been addressed by him. No, he has a pattern. This is his pattern. He does this every single time. So, yeah, Tom's like, this is exactly why I broke up with Ariana, because she did. Th- she was like this all the time. So he's blaming her. Mm-hmm. Her scary meanness. <laughs> She's always like this behind closed doors. This is what pushed me to, to fuck Raquel, basically. Wow, so she just gave him ammo by yelling at him. Yeah. On the show, and he's using it against her, and nobody's buying it. Okay. Brock and Sheena are going to be hosting a beach day. And right. Ariana and Katie are like, Should we fake our death? Katie's like, Should we fake our death so we don't have to go to beach day? <laughs> I don't want to go. It's going to be dramatic again, like last night. But we will go. And Ariana's like, No, I have to go because they're paying me $10,000 to go to the beach day. Right. And then there's a jump cut to a rotting orange covered in flies, which I thought was an interesting choice. I don't know if you caught that. That's the Hollywood dream. (laughs) That's like a nod to the Orange County punk scene. It's very (laughs) like no doubt Tragic Kingdom vibes. (laughs) Speaking of Coachella. (laughs) Speaking of Coachella. They're performing um, this year. Sandoval is composting responsibly in a contrived callback to Ariana's irresponsible incident with the Thai leftovers. Um, I also, yeah, Tom, Tam, Tom always... (laughs) He has this recurring thing that if I didn't do it, the house would fall apart. Ariana never, he's like, 
he's always saying she doesn't do anything in the house. She doesn't clean the heat. When they were fighting about the litter box in front of people, I was like, you guys are obsessed with each other. Yeah. This is sick. I also think that the producers are like, take the trash out. Like, we want to see you doing, like, lowly tasks, you know? Yeah. You want to show how humbled you are by this, by taking the garbage outside. Um, Lala's using a shake weight that was random and had no bearing on anything. <laughs> And then we get a random cut to dinner with Nana. James and Allie go to dinner with Lisa. And I'm like, I keep forgetting Lisa's even on the show anymore. I know. I think I missed that scene. Maybe that was a Peacock exclusive. Oh, yeah. They get dinner with Lisa and James's mom, who is... Oh, no. A, not a, her. And she's <laughs> she's fully sober, so... I respect her for getting her shit together because she was, that was bad. I mean, Kristen, remember, I remember Kristen claimed that she robbed a bank. She's patient zero in James's world. That's for sure. Kristen is his mom. <laughs> I realized that when they were it's dating, true. It's she, true. She, they almost, they look alike. They sound alike. They sound alike. They're the same person. And I think James has such Whoa. mommy issues. Um, Lisa goes, Hello. <laughs> Come sit down. Tell me of the things happening in your world. And they're like, well, James is like, it was a crazy night at a house. We had a water tasting and Sandoval and Ariana got into it dolls. They were fighting <laughs> all the way. And then, and then Ali goes, yeah. And then Katie and Schwartz were fighting because Katie hooked up with Max. And Lisa goes, oh, I've heard things about Max to show me he's, has he's very large in some places if you know what i mean if you catch my drift are you making this up i missed the scene no she goes she's like i heard she basically is like max has is famous for having a huge cock, cock. yeah wow his cock is huge and then um, thanks mama kudos for saying that for kudos spilling. for spilling <laughs> and then james's mom is like well she's like i'm like kind of into katie banging that guy i think that's great the banging's good in my book and i was like all right I agree with her. I'm sure it is, lady. And then we get to the beach day, and it's, I think they're in, like, Doc Wilder or one of those beaches, Will Rogers. I have one thing I want to say first, which is we're at Brock and Sheena's again, and Brock regales us with an old wives' tale about he and, quote-unquote, colleagues owned, quote-unquote, several fitness studios, um, which they had to close. And then Sheena became the main breadwinner. Hmm. Sheena became the main breadwinner. She became that. Yeah. Bitch. Lie. They're like the, they're like the Flintstones if Fred was unemployed. <laughs> that's what they remind me of. I think that's a good. The unemployed Flintstones is a good. Remember, she's like, you didn't have Play-Doh in New Zealand, and he's like, I played in the mud. And I was like, okay. Okay, Fred Flintstone. I I forgot he I thought he was Australian. I forgot he was from New Zealand. I don't know dick about this person <laughs> he's or his fitness studios but i know that giving... sheena has always made the money in that relationship absolutely he's riding her coattails Completely. he got really lucky does he give you dirty john a little he's not smart enough for that yeah i think that sheena mm -mm. i don't know do you think they're gonna last no i know i hope so like first I hope He's a so for some husband for her. Yeah. <laughs> she is a, she's an Elizabeth Taylor type. I think he's Absolutely. I I hope for Summer Moon that they stay together, but if they do break up, I hope they have like an amicable parent cuz I don't want any child to go through that. Like his other children. Okay. Yeah. And they head to they head to the beach and Ariana goes despite being like I'm not going. Mm -hmm. She goes. Which I was like, thank you. You are working. You are showing up for this. I appreciate this. You are doing the work. Kudos, Mama. Thank you for spilling, Mama. We need that, as Nicole Kidman would say. We need that. We come to this place for magic. <laughs> we come to this place for magic. Before this, I forgot to say, Ariana's interior designer comes over, and like, I'm oh again. Oh my I'm, god. I'm so <laughs> darked out by their house. It's they have things stacked to the ceiling, literally. I, th their house is my hell and not for the reason that everybody else thinks it would be, you know, it's like, there's, 
she's doing an inventory of her furniture, which is like furniture from my nightmares. And we, <laughs> I was shocked that we actually meet the interior designer, um, who's ostensibly committing career suicide by revealing her identity on camera. She outed herself. She outed herself. You bought the tree stump. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> she, goes, yeah, she goes, she goes, I feel like that was me. And she goes, you're right. That was you. I was like, <laughs> she goes, I have a list of everything you've done. You paid for these. And she goes, Tom didn't like these tables. And I was like, I don't like them either. Oh my God. All the gold uh, metallic accents everywhere. The art deco in the wrong places. Like mixing eras. The house They're is weird a real hodgepodge. It's a real hodgepodge. It's a real hodgepodge. Thank God it's over. Almost. We'll see if that happens. Um, so at the beach, everyone gets there, and then uh, Tom Sandoval comes stumbling up alone, and everyone's like making fun of him as he walks up, which I loved. When he gets there, James is like, "All right, mate, we're gonna draw a line in the sand here," <laughs> and everyone's making kind of light of it because. Everyone's mm. still traumatized from pizza night. And um, I like that we flash back to James throwing a drink on Schwartz the year before. Yeah, that was great. You know, it made me strangely miss Charlie. I'm like, where's Charlie this season? Charlie was great. It's like, it's a little bit like the land of Oz, you know? It's like people it come and go so quickly here. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a wash of a scene, but this, the fight continues. I they're thought not, this, this they're not was ready even more stop. explosive. It, I thought this was more explosive than even the night before. I was like, well, let's go. What was the thing that started? Tom said something about, like, that's the only bill Ariana's paying. About, um, oh my god, what was it? He makes some little snide comment. Ariana says something. Like, oh, the, adop the adoption fee for the dog. Yeah, she's she basically, she starts coming for him again about the dogs. He's like, you shouldn't have left. You shouldn't have left the chicken satay. I was like, I can't believe we're talking about spe like skewers. And Ariana goes, well, I'm the one that fucking, these are my animals. These are my dogs and cats. And then someone goes, Sandoval, would you agree with that? Do you think they're, they're more Ariana's pets? And he goes, no. And she goes, I'm the one that fucking walks them. I, the, I paid for the adoption. And he goes, that's about the only bill you've ever paid for. I was like, oh my God, you messy bitch. Okay. But to that effect, I did find it interesting that during her meeting with Anne, Ariana was phrasing it as though she wasn't going to fully hire her yet. But she was like, since you're here all day doing nothing, maybe you can... Like, she was essentially speaking to her as though she was trying to get work out of her for free. And I, I clocked it. Yeah, I felt I'm that like, was... That was wrong. I felt that I felt uncomfortable by that. And someone's like, so Anne is unemployed now. And she's like, basically, Tom fired her and she's looking for jobs. So but I told her between me and Katie, she'll have work. And they're like, oh, are and you going to hire her as your joint assistant? She goes, she's going to help us with the sandwich shop. I was like. And then Tom was like, I didn't fire her. <laughs> so That was, I don't know. It's confusing. I'm just saying sometimes I think there might be a little truth to what Tom is saying about Ariana. Maybe yeah, exaggerated, but I think it's rooted in something. And I think they've all learned from the master of not paying people. <laughs> Lisa Vanderpump. Lisa Vanderpump. <laughs> um, totally. So that, that feels like a very like classic LVP move. Um, I was but... kind of doing like a. For I was like watching the scene very forensically because I was like, I know this is going to explode, and I I was sort of like, it was like a small. It's like the ramping up of like the alert level, you know. Yeah before like a nuclear blast mm -hmm. like uh schwartz being like she and i got you something and like throwing her a capri sun but like not offering a capri sun to like ariana because he's scared of her yeah and then her clocking that moment of like sheena being nice to schwartz and like i was just watching ariana get like a little more annoyed a little more annoyed like yeah. the capri sun breached the dividing line <laughs> the capri sun was the first brick it was the first brick <laughs> Um, and then someone brings up Raquel and Tom like makes a joke out of it. Well, there was like a, Tom starts talking about how he's going to go to a singles event. Oh, right. And, and like, I also felt like. 
there was this nervous energy coming from Sheena and James where they're laughing too hard at every little joke that like Schwartz makes because everyone was so uncomfortable that they're trying to like break the tension. It wasn't really working. And then what was the next part? Like, oh, there's a little bit talk about the whole Max and Sheena thing because Katie had kind of set that up that she was going to continue making that an issue, but she was actually being kind of chill about it. Yeah. And she says to Sandoval, hey, Sandoval, Hey, Sam, did you know about that? That Yeah, that was kissed... weird that she was did like, you, Sandoval. Did you, know, did you know they kissed in Vegas? Did you know? Did you know that? Did you know this has happened, Sandoval? And, and he's then like, she, she was like, everyone here flirts with me, actually, including you to Sandoval, which was like a really weird and appropriate thing to say. And then Sandoval said, it's more that you're the recipient of flirtiness. Which <laughs> is very like, Seinfeldian like splitting hairs of like she's like you flirted with me he's like you're the recipient of flirtiness yeah which is so dumb but also like a really poetic sentence yeah and then Brock goes it's like huh, huh, is that what you told Raquel when that whole thing started and then like that was when and Ariana goes I think it's fucking disgusting that you're making jokes about that so thank you please don't fucking talk about that in front of me and Santa was like, was, oh, God, I'm just, oh, oh. It was, like, actually very interesting because Brock was saying that because in that moment he was, like, seething with possessiveness over Sheena. Like, yeah. Sheena referencing flirting with Sandoval. Yeah. So then he got mad at Sandoval in that moment because he's, like, a caveman and was, like, trying to hurt Sandoval by bringing up Raquel. He was and activated. So it, yeah. It was yeah. a perfect, like, set of dominoes falling. And then it just fucking goes again. Yeah. And the it's even more nuclear this time because they're on a beach and it's like they can scream <laughs> into the wind. <laughs> and they while just fucking up. Yeah. while mic'd up, they fucking go at it. James and Sheena are very Al Anon. They're like codependent. Well, I like that James was the one kind of asking the questions about the pets and being like, you know. Do you think they're her pets? And then she's like, I paid the adoption fee. I'm like, this is the information that I want. Yes, and also, like, you know? they're probably all like, I'd, it's a mystery to them, too. They're probably like, I want to know what's going on. This is crazy. So, like, tell us the what's happening with, like, the dividing of assets. Like, I and would want to know. like, if that's what makes them your pets that you paid the adoption fee, then according to that logic, let's talk about the house. Because, like, I was the one that paid put the down payment. He starts getting into lawyer mode about it. And I was yeah. like, this is actually really good. I want this to keep going. I want to know everything happening in their divorce. I want to fight um, an episode like this. Totally. A whole episode. A sit down. Well, this is kind of like giving what I wanted on the reunion. Because I know that was fresh like three weeks after. So like she was still. But like Tom didn't get to speak. Because everyone was just like, fuck you. Every time he opened his mouth. Which was like kind of funny in a way. But also like I want to know the tea. I want to know like what's, you know, like I want to I want to hear the nitty gritty of like the affair and like. The logistics. I want to know, you know, s receipts, text messages, screenshots. You know, I wanted all of that. Mm -hmm. No, there was there was that moment too on this episode though that when she was screaming at Water Night. Yeah. Where she she tried to do one of those. She was like, sociopath, disgusting, psycho, narcissist, yeah. gaslighter, piece of shit, yeah. person. Blah, blah. Like I was like, okay, we're back. We're so back. <laughs> It took 10 episodes, but we're there. Finally, finally. I want their divorce to be fully televised, like the OJ trial. Yes. In court. Court TV. I want it all. Damn. That would be, that would galvanize our country in this divided election year. No, but you know, it's like, Diddy, there's all these things happening at once right now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there was like the Nickelodeon controversy, which we touched on a little bit. And then like Diddy eclipsed that. The eclipse you know, is like, coming. There's this one thing is eclipsing the next, eclipsing the next. And it's all kind of in service of eclipsing the election. Because mm. nobody's going to vote this time. <sighs> yeah. But we need distractions, I think. Well, it's like, yeah, whenever there's a UFO dump, there were like... Mm. Did you see over at so SoCal the other night, there were like space debris falling over LA? No, because guess why? I was busy watching this. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the night before last. I was distracted by some other bullshit, I'm sure. 
Also, what's weird, just before we end this amazing recap, SpaceX is now launching rockets regularly over LA, and I'm like, this is weird. This feels like Gattaca. Oh, right. I saw like a headline that was like, here's an explanation for the two giant fireballs that flew over Los Angeles. I was like, huh? <laughs> but I'm like, okay, like it's it's cool to watch because so, I can see a perfect view of it coming over the hills from where I live. And it's beautiful, but it's also like, what if it blows up? Oh, my God. If one well, of like, those, if, if a piece of shrapnel hit my Jeep, can you imagine? No, I can't imagine that. And like, we all know Elon's prone, his stuff is prone to blowing up. So I'm like... Is this safe? He's a pyro. Yeah. He is a big pyro. It's like, that's so, I just gave away my age saying the word pyro. Remember when we used to call everybody pyros? Yeah. I'm... As, a, as a culture. Yeah. Every boy pyro, pyromania goes to a pyro was phase. huge. Pyromania was huge in middle school. So was kleptomania. Kleptomania. All the manias. Where have all the manias gone? Remember the guy that was lighting cars on fire in LA? It was like two years before I moved here. That was me. I'm a pyromaniac. <laughs> it was Patrick Sandberg. <laughs> no, Patrick... I mean, there was someone doing it like last year. Like there was like they were going over into everyone's carports and lighting up cars and then burning the carports down. You're a sick pup when you're a pyro. It's like it's really it gets old, you know, you do it yeah. once. You've seen <laughs> one car burn. You've seen them all. Yeah, I've seen cars burning. So it's a very L.A. thing to see a car burn. It's like it inexplicably sort of, it beautiful, actually. It's like a Salem video. <laughs> we t- Yeah, everyone in this... Uh, we, I've radicalized our listeners to Salem, I think. If they hadn't already known who they were. Patrick okay. is, a, is a Salem head as well. Move that merch. Um, Patrick, do you have any final thoughts on VPR? Like, hopes for the season ahead or... Um, I hope that the reunion uh, is as dramatic as last time and yet more civil Mm. i think i want to hear more being said and less screaming you know it was just so unhinged last time and this time ostensibly we will be getting tom and ariana back on the same reunion so maybe this will be kind of what we wanted from the last one yeah um and there's just something that i've had on my mind all season i think actually Ever since James called Sandoval a worm with a mustache Mm -hmm. and his whole slipperiness and his kind of villainy, um, who he reminds me of someone in particular and it took me a long time to figure out who it was. So I'm going to make like a crazy throwback reference to the sixties. Um, professor Hinkle Tinkerton. Do you know who that is? No. He's the villain on Frosty the Snowman. <gasps> <laughs> Sorry to just back to the future, everyone, right back to their childhoods, but that's who fucking Sandoval reminds me of wow. sometimes. You know, Frosty stole his magic top hat. Yeah, that guy. This is him. And he wants Frosty to unalive himself. Well, Frosty is Ariana, and Sandoval's magic hat is fame. He also looks like Jax. The chin. Yeah. Wow, this is a really succinct. This is great. This is literally <laughs> him. I'm shook kind of right now. He's a little Gargamel and he's a little bit uh Professor Hinkle. Yeah. From Frosty the Snowman, for sure. Professor Hinkle tries to murder Frosty by locking him in a greenhouse. His punishment for Hinkle is awfully draconian. <laughs> Writing out, I'm sorry for what I did to Frosty a hundred zillion times. A hundred zillion. Well, Patrick, do you have places where people can find you? No. No. Don't. Just don't. Well, you can Google Patrick, and he's written a lot of really cool things. Thank you. I really appreciate you doing this. You were a perfect substitute. I just want to say that I said a lot of mean things, and I'm aware of it. But I think that that's the beauty of Vanderpump Rules, is that... These shows, and I feel the same way about Summer House. I feel the same way about um, Real Housewives, certainly. These people humiliate themselves for our entertainment to make us feel better about ourselves. Yeah. You know, it is punching. It's punching down, but it's punching up. You know? Yeah. No, we... They're making lots of money, these people. We say and it all the time. they're asking for it. Yeah. yeah. We say it all the time. These people, like... 
the point of the show is is recoiling in horror. So I think you're allowed to say whatever you want. You're also a guest, so you can just come yeah. in. I don't think anyone's going to think you're being mean. Honestly, just go off on the Reddit or whatever because I'm not going to read it. And um, no, everyone's going to love we're, you. We're all free to disagree. You know. Yeah, this is a fucking this is the United States of America. This pod is for Gen Alpha. Yeah, we're already yeah. thinking long term. Mm-hmm. We plan in centuries, as the Bene Gesserit <laughs> say. Well, Patrick, thank you for joining uh, me. And guys, we're gonna do Valley recaps next week when Laura has returned. So. Don't fear if you're like, why isn't that uploaded yet? But this episode will be uploaded tomorrow, as usual. I can't or or watch today. That. I know you should though, it's so good. I watched the first episode and then I tried the second one and I was like, these low lifes, I just can't. I don't care if they're pregnant or whatever. I was like, this is just I can't do it. It's a bridge too far. It it's far, but it's necessary. It is good to see uh, you know, what's her name again? Dodie. <laughs> yeah. So good. Old, what's her name? Old Dodie. <laughs> I don't have the cult list in front of me. Please forgive me. We'll do an extra special, extra long cult shout out next week. And to that, I say tickets for our, our summer tour are on sale now. Three shows have sold out in New York, Chicago, and Seattle. Vancouver's close to selling out. We're probably going to try to add some more tickets if available and possibly a new show. I'm not sure, but stay tuned and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Sexy Unique Podcast is created and hosted by me, Lara Marie Shane Halls. This episode was co-hosted by the one and only Carrie O'Donnell. This episode was edited by Ness Smith-Savadoff.